everybody. Morning, uh, wherever you're watching in the world. Uh, my name is Fiona and welcome to our first event of Sunday in our Open Doors weekend, our virtual Open Doors weekend, uh, calling here from the Royal Observatory in Edinburgh. My name is Fiona, as I said, I work here at the Royal Observatory and you are here for hopefully the virtual stargazing session. So I'm going to be using a computer program to show you how you can uh, easily do this at home as well, view the night sky, uh, whatever it's like outside, so you're ready uh, when you do have dark, clear skies. So I'm just looking at where you're watching from. If you're on Zoom, hello to those of you if you're watching this on YouTube or later on as well. We've got people watching from Edinburgh, uh, at the USA as well, which is brilliant. It's uh, very early in the morning there, so well done <laughs> for getting up early or staying up late. I don't know. Um, so before we get started, I'd just like to go through a couple of things just in case you're new to Zoom. So if you just bear with me, if you, you know these things already, but just to get everyone up to speed, on your toolbar, you should have a few buttons that you can use. So you'll notice that you have a chat button. So a few of you have already used that to say hello to us. If you've got any kind of general questions, technical things that we might be able to help with, uh, do pop it in the chat. It just comes to myself and also um, our help in the background who is Kieran as well. So Kieran will see your message. Uh, we're loving seeing where you're watching from as well. So do, do please say hello. Uh, also on your toolbar, you have a Q&A button which you can use at any point during the events. Uh, we have our resident expert in the background who I'll in introduce in a moment, our expert astronomer. And if you've got any questions to do with space, anything that we're looking at, um, or any, any questions about the work that we do here at the Royal Observatory, then if you click on the Q&A button, you can submit a question. And also if we've got time after the, the virtual tour of the night sky, we'll, we'll pick up some questions at the end as well. Uh, the third and final thing, uh, that's on your toolbar is you should see that there's a live transcript option. So this is if you just need to see some subtitles, they are auto generated. So apologies if they pick up some strange things in the way I say, say words, uh, but they, they, they might be useful to you. If they are, just press that button, you can show or hide them, and then you can also change the size of the text. Uh, I'll let you know again that this is being recorded, this event, so we will pop it on our website afterwards, and also we're streaming on YouTube, so if you check the STFC YouTube channel, I'll tell you details at the end, you can watch back later or share with anyone else who you think might be interested. So I think I'm ready to, hello, I'm just going to say hello to Amanda and Sophie watching in Wiltshire. Hi, hello. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to introduce uh, our expert astronomer and also Kieran, if you could pop up and just say hello so we can put a face to a name, that would be fantastic. So Kieran and Gillian, hello. Hi everyone. Um, if you've been watching from yesterday, you're probably sick of seeing my face. I also work as part of the public engagement team, um, so I'll be in the background if you need any help. Thanks, Kieran. And Gillian, are you okay to pop, pop your camera on so we can say hello? Oh, maybe I need to help you with that. I'm not sure. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> Sometimes I need to press something, I think. Sorry about that. Hi, Gillian. Hello. <laughs> Great to have you here. Uh, yeah, sorry, you Gillian. switched me off, Fiona. Oh, sorry, Gillian. I'm so sorry. Um, I had the power. There you go. So here you are. Apologies about that. So Gillian, um, do you want to just say a quick hello? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Gillian. I'm an astronomer. I'm the director of the UK Astronomy Technology Centre and most of what I work on at the moment is the James Webb Space Telescope. Exciting yeah we've got some update I'll remember at the end as well Kieran will pop in the chat we do have an exciting well loads of exciting events coming up talking about Webb because it's moving up towards the launch in December which is very exciting but anyway we'll talk about that, that at the end. So um, what I'm going to do next is uh, let's get started on our virtual stargazing. So Gillian if you like you can you can disappear back um, and turn it that there we go and I'll actually I'll pop see you later I'll pop my camera off as well just because that helps a little bit sometimes with the program we're going to use so as I said this is a program called Solarium and you can actually download this yourself um, you can use a web version as well so perhaps Kieran can pop the link in the chat it's completely free to use and it's a really good tool if you're just beginners or anyone who's wanting to do some stargazing you can basically see whatever you would see in the night sky at any date or time, um, anywhere in the world. You can set it to wherever you are, um, 
you can change the background as well. So we've changed that you can see, you might notice this is the rooftop at the Royal Observatory. So I'll talk about the view that we can see here, um, but it's a really, really good program to use. So let's get started. Uh, make yourself comfortable um, and just, yeah, relax and let's have a look at the night sky together. So as I said, we're here on the rooftop at the Royal Observatory. And if we have a little look around, um, you'll notice that this is one of the tower domes. So we've got these very beautiful Victorian domes here at the observatory. We've got the East Tower and over in this direction, we've got the West Tower as well. So we're looking out across the city of Edinburgh. I don't know how well you know the city of Edinburgh. Uh, we're in the south of the city up on a hill called Blackford Hill. And we get one of the best views, if not the best view, I think, in the city because we can see lots and lots of different things. Um, and I'll pop some uh, labels on for you so you can just see these. Um, also, what you can do is you can pop up these uh, compass points so we can see which direction we're facing, which is very handy. So as I said, we're over to the east here with the east dome, and then we're looking to the north here. So if you look out over to the city, uh, you're just about to make out this, this blob here is actually Edinburgh Castle. Uh, just on the end of Princess Street, um, up towards as Carlton Hill as well, if you know the city. It's very beautiful. If you, if you ever get a chance to travel here, um, we'd, we'd love to, to have you. And also over here, you'll just spot there's a label for Arthur's Seat. So this is a, a hill, a, a mountain, a, a, a hill. I mean, it's pretty big, um, but it's a, it's a hill just out of the city uh, that you can climb. And yeah, also gives you a very good view. So yeah, that's just a couple of things that we can spot. And uh, we'll notice that luckily in Stellarium, it's always a beautiful, clear sky. I mean, <laughs> not a cloud at all. Not like today, unfortunately, in uh, Edinburgh. It's warm, but quite cloudy, which uh, if it's cloudy at nighttime, of course, isn't very good for stargazing. So what we're going to do is just make sure that we're facing towards the north. And I'm going to actually just uh, set the sun so that it's because at the moment you can see if you look down, this tells us the time at the moment we're at six o'clock. Uh, this evening, so the 26th of September, um, and we're going to set the sun um, a little bit in advance to 9 p.m. So we're a little bit darker. There we go. So you'll notice now that the, the stars have appeared in the night sky, um, and we can hopefully point out some of the things that you can see at this time of year um, and also all year round as well. Okay, so we're going to be talking about. Um, the same bits of sky and we like to divide these um, up into patterns called constellations so you might know that word um, so I'm going to talk about some of these patterns so we actually use here in the UK uh, the Greek or western constellations um, but there's lots of other ways um, that you can divide up the night sky you might even want to uh, make up your own <laughs> if you see something uh, some of them you have to really use your imagination so let's have a look at all those patterns so here we are these are all the the northern hemisphere patterns. So this is the northern skies. So if you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll see a different view of the night sky. Um, but these are the ones that we see up here um, from Edinburgh. So we'll have a look at some of these together. Um, but you'll notice there's quite a lot of them. So we'll just pick out some of the main ones. So the first pattern we're going to uh, look at is a, a very famous pattern. Uh, it's one that, you know, if you're starting stargazing, it's a really good place to start because it's very bright stars. You can see them even in the, the middle of Edinburgh here, despite the uh, light pollution from the street lights and things. Uh, and this is called the plough. So let's have a look at the plough. Now you might know this from a, a different name. You might know this as um, the saucepan, some people like to call it. There we go, there's the line art so we can see it. So this is actually, uh, it's not a constellation, it's an asterism. So that might be another new word to you, but that just means that it's part of a bigger pattern. So hopefully you can see my, uh, my uh, arrow here and you can see that we've got the uh, line art here that shows us it. Look, it does look like a saucepan. I mean, you can imagine your beans in here or your soup or whatever, um, but this is actually made up of a bigger pattern um, which is called, let's pop it on here, Ursa Major. So this is actually the great bear. So here he is. I mean, he's got the longest tail I've ever seen of a bear, but never mind. Um, he's the great bear. So here he is. So that's Ursa Major. So we're going to have a little look closer at some of the things in the plough because there's quite a lot to see, um, even from where we are here. So let's just pop those lines off. There we go. So we can back, back to these stars here. So you should just be able to make out. Um, there's the saucepan shape, this plough shape. 
with these bright stars here. And one of my favorite secrets is all about a star called Mizar. So it's this one here. There we go, if we click on it, oh, we're getting the bear back. There we go. Let's get rid of him for a moment. Um, and also we've got a little label and we have put the name up here, which is very handy, tells us that is Mizar. So the exciting thing about Mizar is if you've got very good eyes, <laughs> really, really good eyes, you might just be able to make it out. Or if you've got a, uh, a telescope to help you, if you look really closely, uh, you might actually see that it's not just one star, it's two stars very close together. So if we zoom in a little bit, uh, which is the handy thing with Stellarium, we can actually see this second star as well. So let's zoom in. There you go. Now this second style like, that should have just appeared now, there you go, you can see it now. This is called Alcor. And in ancient times, this, well, this was actually used as an eye test. So one story tells of it being used to decide whether you would become an archer in the Roman army. And another Japanese myth tells that if you can no longer see it, then you're officially old. <laughs> it's a bit, never mind. Um, so uh, that was a, a way that it was used in the past which is very interesting. So I think we can actually do a lot better than this. Uh, so we can zoom in even more because uh, telescopes, uh, like the, the ones that we build, experiments, instruments, we call them. So we build these, these things that go on telescopes here at the Royal Observatory at the UK Astronomy Technology Centre. Uh, these allow us to see much more detail than we can with our eyes. So in 1722, a long, long time ago, a third star was actually discovered in this group and it's called Ludwig's star. And more recently, a fourth, fifth, sixth um, star was found. And the last one, this was as recently as 2009, so not that long ago. So we're still learning new things about these stars. So let's have a, another zoom in even further so we can actually see, yeah, that this one, there we go, splits into another star as well. So it might look like there's just one star in the sky, but sometimes because these things are very far away, um, we actually find that when we use telescopes and use technology, we can see a lot more. So let's zoom out a little bit because we've, <laughs> we've zoomed very close in there. There we go. So now we're going to just look at the circumpolar constellations. So let's make sure these are selected. There we go. Okay, so in this area here, we've got some constellations, some patterns that we can see all year round. So that's what it means when I say circumpolar. That just means that, that we can see them in the sky all year round and facing towards um, around the north. So the first one, one of those was Ursa Major. So if you remember the plow um, was part of that. So let's just pop those lines back on. There we go. So we can see our, our great bear here with his long tail. So that's the first of these circumpolar constellations. And the plow is really handy as well. Not only does it hold lots of secrets like those double stars and all sorts of things um, that we saw a moment ago, actually you can use it as a signpost um, for you to find a, a really important star in the Northern Hemisphere, which is called Polaris. So it's really easy to find. What you need to do is, if you can see at the end of the saucepan or the plow, you've got these bright stars here. Hopefully you can see my arrow. And if you follow the line up and if you keep imagine, imagine you're keeping drawing it, you're, you're still drawing a line all the way up. Here we go. Eventually you get to this really bright star here. Now it should be quite obvious, even in say a town or a city, you can still see it quite brightly. And you'll notice that this is actually the tail of a smaller pattern, a constellation which is called not Ursa Major, this is Ursa Minor. This is the the little bear or the baby bear. So I'll pop the label on so you can see Ursa Minor. So once you found this star called Polaris or the North Star, you're on the tail of another pattern as well, which is really handy. And this, this star, if, if actually that, what we'll do is we'll fast forward time and, and this will show you what I mean. So we're gonna advance to midnight now. So we'll fast forward a little bit. So watch what happens. So did you see what happened? Yeah. So you'll notice that it looks like all those other stars are rotating around that Polaris, that North Star. And it looks as if it's just staying in one position. So this star, if you were to look down, so if we look down towards the horizon, you'll notice it's 
always directly above north, so you can find north through the North Star. And you, you should have noticed that, that as, as time went on, those circumpolar constellations, so we've got Ursa Major and Cassiopeia up here, whoops, um, which is this uh, lady looking at herself in the mirror. I mean, it looks like an M or a W really, but <laughs> you have to really use your imagination. So you've noticed they all rotated around as, as time went on. So that's, that's how we can see them all the time as these circumpolar constellations. Now, if you were on the North Pole, um, you would actually see the North Star almost directly above your head. So this can also tell us about how far north or south we are. So um, our latitude, um, or sorry, longitude, which is really handy. So that's another thing that we can do. So the North Star is very useful. Okay, so let's go and have a look at something else. So we've looked at these circumpolar constellations. Um, let's look at some seasonal constellations. So we're just coming, we're kind of at the end of summer. I mean, it's still pretty warm here in Edinburgh, weirdly. Um, but let's look at a constellation that's just kind of setting um, in the evening skies, but it's a really good one to know about. So it's called the Summer Triangle. This is uh, made up of three constellations, this shape. So see if you can spot the triangle. Let's go and have a look at it. Okay, so can you make out these three bright stars here? So just about, there we go. So these really bright stars, these are actually um, three stars in the summer triangle, we call it. And now we're facing towards the west. And as I said, we can see this throughout the summer, but it's, it's, very, it's very late until it gets dark. So uh, we're actually at midnight now. Um, so if you're up late, you would see this. And as, as it moves on throughout the autumn, it appears lower and lower in the west until it disappears completely until next spring. So this star at the top, this is called Deneb. And this is actually the head of a pattern, one of my favorites. It's called Cygnus the Swan. So here it is, a beautiful swan. You can see it's outstretched wings in the pattern. And the cool thing about if you found uh, Cygnus the Swan, and if you manage to get to some dark skies, so away from the towns and cities, if you're lucky, your clear skies, you might spot something that this swan is, it looks like it's flying across it. Uh, it's very beautiful. You'll notice in the background this fuzzy kind of band here. So you might know what this is. You're probably shouting it out to the person next to you. I can't quite hear you, so, but you're probably shouting out the Milky Way. Um, yes, this is the Milky Way, and this is actually made up of billions of stars gathered together in a group called a galaxy. So we live on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy, a little bit how, like, from the observatory you can see the lights of the city of Edinburgh in the distance. And as I said, if you're lucky enough to get some dark skies, a clear night, you'll be able to see um, the Milky Way. It's a part of our galaxy. Very exciting. So let's move back towards the north because we've got one more thing to look at. One of my favorite constellations. This is a very popular one. So we're going to advance time now to three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so if we're up very, very late or very early, um, but as we get into winter, you'll see this earlier in the night sky. So it's a really good one to, to know about for when, when winter comes here in uh, the UK and you can spot it. So let's have a closer look. If we move over to the other side of the sky, And you can spot it right away. I mean, look at it. It's, it's so easy to spot this one. This is a great one if you're beginning stargazing as well. You'll see these three stars here. This is Orion. So you might know about Orion's belt. So these three stars, that's what it's called. We've got Orion Nebula. We've got uh, this star here as well. It's, it looks kind of a reddy orange color. And this one looked kind of a bluey white color. So we don't have time to talk about all the things in Orion, but if you look, uh, further into this, you'll find there's lots to spot if you're stargazing, especially if you get dark skies, but even in the city, you can see these different colors of these stars. So the different colors are basically to do with uh, the temperature and the age of the stars. So I like to remember it's the opposite of taps. So normally if you have taps here in the UK anyway, we have a cold tap is blue and a hot tap is red. So it's the opposite way with stars. So this one that's kind of ready orange is a little bit cooler, still very hot. Um, but and this one that's like bluey kind of white color, that's that's very, very hot star, very young star. Okay, so 
Unfortunately, we're nearly out of time for our virtual stargazing, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, download Stellarium, have a look at the web version, or maybe even look at the real night sky. I mean, that is the best option, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is let's fast forward now to sunrise because we're pretty much there, not that far to go. And let's watch the sunrise together. Okay, so here we are back on the rooftop of the observatory. Well, we never really left, did we? But it felt, felt like we went to space at some points there. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed our, our little whirlwind tour of the night sky and that's inspired you to take a look yourself as well. So, uh, let's, I'll stop sharing my screen and hopefully, there we go. Brilliant. Okay, and let's have a look. Do we have any questions, Kieran? We do. We got absolutely ambushed by one at 10, 7 past 10 immediately. So I'll, I'll just <laughs> Brilliant. Wait to you. got key and people watching. I like it. <laughs> OK, so if, do we have a question? And Gillian, if you can pop your I don't know if I need to do it for you. Let's see. Pop your camera on and let's see what questions we have. Did you both enjoy the night sky tour? I feel quite relaxed now. <laughs> yeah, I always I, I always find these so relaxing as well. Hopefully yeah, no one's right. falling asleep. <laughs> I could listen. I could listen to the stories of the stars ever and ever and ever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a lovely compliment! They're always the, one, the ones that you can see so easily on, on the night sky. There's loads of different stories about them as people over the ages. I find that fascinating that people have always looked at the stars, and thought about them, and made stories about them. It's like a connection to the past, isn't it? Yeah, thinking yeah. about that. <laughs> cool. So, oh, we've got another question popping. Kieran, do we have any, any questions waiting? Let's do our ambush first because okay, go this for is it. a really good one for Gillian. So, at seven past ten in the morning, far too early for this kind of thing, but here we go. Um, hi, does the universe have an end? Does it go to infinity or does it have an edge? From Henrietta, age nine. I oh, like wow. Henrietta. <laughs> Henrietta, you're yes. a morning thinker. That's a really yes, deep, like complicated question. Yes, um, it's it doesn't have an edge so far as we can measure. So what we can measure is that it had a beginning, that it began at the Big Bang. And ever since then, it's been the universe we can see began at the Big Bang. And ever since then, it's been expanding and expanding and getting bigger and bigger with no with no edge. So. The way I like to think about this, supposing you were blowing up a balloon, then, then the surface of the balloon just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and everything keeps moving away from everything else. And that's what's happening in our universe. That's what we measure. Yeah, I really like the, um, the one that astronomers in like the 1930s used to talk about, which was called the plum pudding model, which I just think is fantastic. And it's like if you get some bread with raisins in and you put it in the oven, and as it rises, it and it gets bigger, everything moves the away from everything else. Apart. I just like the <laughs> yes. idea is it's a very hungry astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. Well, and that just reminds me when I bake anything, it doesn't ever seem to rise. So I don't know. I think I, I do things wrong with baking, though. Yeah, <laughs> my, say, raisins, yeah. <laughs> my raisins all fall to the pan. <laughs> yeah. They still taste good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, thanks. Brilliant. Great question, Henrietta. I love it. Brilliant. It is. It's one. It's one of the big puzzles that astronomers are still working on today, trying to fill in more of, of how that all works. Really big. So, okay, Kieran. Do we have any any other questions? Oh, here's a good one. So, um, where's the best place in Scotland for really dark dark skies? We're kind of spoiled here, I guess. Do you have any favourites, Julian? So I like the island of Mull, which is quite quite a long way. But actually, there's also, I mean, we have a, a, a local a local hill and it's just out in the countryside and you're away from the lights of Edinburgh and that's great as well. Yeah, I, I think pretty much anywhere you don't outside have of to, the central belt, right, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you really don't have to go very far in Scotland to get to somewhere where you can't see the city lights and, and it's pretty dark. The more remote places like the Western Isles and things, they're even darker just because they're further away. But honestly, something that's an hour's drive from Edinburgh, you'll be out in the dark skies. 
Yeah, lots of people. Um, Dumfries and Galloway is, yeah. is it an international dark sky? I forget the. Yeah, the Dumfries and Galloway's. There's a famous dark skies park um, that's um, very very dark. Um, but yeah, as soon as you get outside of that sort of Glasgow Edinburgh belt, Glasgow Edinburgh Stirling bit, as soon yeah, yeah. clear of that, it's great. Yeah. Another tip is if you're going to be going stargazing, a good thing to get is a red, red light torch. Um, so you might be tempted to put your kind of torches on and bright lights and your phones and things, but you want to let your eyes adjust. And it takes a little while, but then as soon as they do, you know, after a few minutes, um, you'll, yeah, you'll really notice the difference with how many stars you can see. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we all get to experience that, which is great. Cool. Do we have any other questions, Kieran? Yeah, kind of oh, If anyone's thinking much. of any, pop them in the, the Q&A. Uh, a related one, which was just as a beginner, uh, what magazines, books, equipment would you recommend? So I actually am a big proponent of starting out with just your eyes. So the one thing I would actually buy if I was starting out is, you know, those little phone tripods, which you can use to like prop your phone up. I would buy one of those and then learn how to use your phone in what's called long exposure mode. So that's where you take a picture over about 10 or 20 seconds. And then what you can do is you can just put your phone on a tripod, you can leave it for 10 and 20 seconds still, and it will take really, really cool pictures that are even more kind of detailed in your eyes. And it's I find that a really good place to start because that gives you these like nice wide pictures of things that you're looking at. And then you can expand into, you know, um, buying binoculars and telescopes and all that fancy stuff, which is really expensive and kind of, you want to make sure it's something you enjoy first because it can be very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely need to wrap it warm. I think, yeah, you're right, Kieran. Just kind of try out some things that you've got. I mean, your camera phone, most of them, if you've got a modern one, they've actually got pretty pretty good camera. Um, and also, yeah, if you've got, I mean, some people have binoculars maybe in the drawer if you, if you do bird watching or if you just have some, you know, around the house or you could borrow some from someone. Um, they're a good thing to use to look at the moon and um, that's another good place to start as well because even with your eyes or a, a pair of binoculars you can see a lot more detail and it's it's a really good thing just to take a look at the moon maybe draw some features on it see what you can see um yeah so stellarium if you you can actually zoom into the moon as well and you can have a look at the planets so you might you know spot some of the features if you had a look on stellarium you could check and, see, and spot them on the real moon um, so yeah, another thing I should say is if you, uh, wherever you are, we have the Ast Astronomical Society of Edinburgh, here in Edinburgh, but do check out, um, do a quick search online, see what your local astronomy society is and just get in touch with them. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help with tips of kind of things to, to use, or maybe even they have might have things you could borrow to test out, say a telescope or something before um, taking the plunge and buying anything, because um, it can be a little bit pricey, some of the, these things. So yeah, I would definitely check that out. Um, oh, I think we've got some things in the chat. Um, yeah, uh, we are, at the moment, we're doing a lot of online events. Um, I'll tell you about them uh, just now, I think, because we're at half oh, past, actually. Remember yeah, so someone's it. asking about the events, um, and I think we'll end there with the questions. So, uh, Gillian and Kieran, if you do have a moment to answer any that we've got waiting, feel free to in the background. Um, but otherwise, if you've got other questions for us that we didn't get to today, uh, you can tweet at us, at Royal Ops. Uh, we'll be able to answer them there, so please do. Uh, and in a moment, Kieran, if it's okay, is going to pop. I think he might have already done it. He's already done it. Pop something in the chat so that you can check out some of our online events. So someone was asking um, wh when we're open and what we're doing. So at the moment, we're doing lots of online events, so you can check them out in those links. And also today, we've got loads more things happening today. We've got a virtual tour of the um, engineering labs and also of the Victorian building. So me and Kieran will be taking a tour around and showing you some of the things in the dome. So please do join us for that later on. Um, before I get into the other boring things at the end, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Gillian for answering the questions and joining us today. Thank you. And also to Kieran for helping out in the background. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed watching today and I hope you do join us for some other events. Gillian will be speaking again October the 5th, I believe, um, all about web with Catherine Haymans, yeah. who is the quite new still uh, Astronomer Royal for Scotland, which is very exciting. So if you're free, do check that event out. Um, we'd love to have you along there to learn more about web. 
uh, that we were talking about at the start. So, Kieran, I think, do you have a slide to pop up as well? Oh, yes, I do. So we've got, before we go, just so you've got the information as well, there we go. If you want to take a picture of this or anything, there's our Twitter handle and also the website for the virtual tours. So, other than that, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you've enjoyed our virtual tour of the night sky, and hopefully we'll see you at another event soon. Bye, everyone.